You are watching The Randy and Krista Show. I'm Randy Alvarez. And I'm Krista Arecchio, and this is News That Makes You Healthier. And today we have part two of how our food supply could be making us sick and what we can do about it. I'm pretty excited about this guest, okay, Randy. Okay, good. Yeah, this guy's big. I saw his movie. Mm -hmm. You told me to look at his movie, and I did. Mm -hmm. It was good. Good stuff. Really good. And so GMOs, amongst other things, right? Mm -hmm. And the politics of food. Uh, why don't you, before we get him here via Skype, mm -hmm. Um, give me your thoughts on this. Um, this is this is something I'm really passionate about. It's something I talk about ad nauseum to all of my clients and anybody who will listen. And I really, uh, I, I have a problem with genetically modified foods when they have been altered for commercial interests okay. versus the selective crossbreeding to make a fruit more mature or healthier. And that's really not happening anymore. So what's happening is we're just modifying food for commercial interests and it's having a huge adverse impact on human health fertility, digestive health, autoimmune conditions. And so Jeffrey Smith is here, and he's, he's going to talk about it because I don't know if anybody knows more about this subject than he does. Now you have seen his movie three times, mm -hmm. you told me, and mm -hmm. you said that every time you see his movie... I can't sleep at night. I mean, you get that excited about it? Yeah, Randy, this say, is wow. such a big deal. Like, good, How good. many people are struggling, are suffering, are having these issues, and they're losing 10, 15 years of their life. They're spending all of their free time and funds okay. at the doctor, and, and it's, it's unnecessary. You know, opinion. we should mention something. And this is why I think Krista, it's like anything else in life, that if you haven't seen it with your own two eyes, the benefits of getting off of this stuff, you're not as excited. Mm -hmm. Krista, and I've met one of her clients, mm -hmm. that just by getting rid of all the GMO and all of the known allergens, that everything went away. Her chronic fatigue, mm -hmm. her brain fog, depression, anxiety, especially, Intestinal all went away. Pain. But she's, but but you see that all the time, right? I mean, you've seen a it's lot a, of that, right? Sure, it's a it's a regular it's a regular occurrence for me, which is why I'm so passionate about it. Because someone will live a totally different life, and so they don't have to struggle with rheumatoid-like symptoms, arthritis, intestinal discomfort, pain, eczema, psoriasis. I mean, the, the root of our health lies in our digestive system. And so it's really important what we're eating. And the other argument, just from a nutrition perspective, if we weren't going to talk about the technology of genetic engineering, is that these foods that we're eating are now more pro-inflammatory. They turn on the stress response. And when you turn on the stress response, you secrete cortisol, the stress hormone. You thin the mucosal lining within the intestinal tract. and. So then, of course, if you're not digesting your food and toxins are leaking into the bloodstream, food is leaking into the bloodstream, that's going to damage your thyroid, damage your adrenals, and give you an autoimmune response. Interesting. Okay, so with uh, let, let's go to Jeffrey Smith. Let's bring him on. And, uh, we've got him on the line. Jeffrey, welcome to the program. Thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> so I, I'm really curious. I, I've been following your work for a while, and I just think everything you're doing is fantastic, and I thank you for being an advocate to protect our food supply. And I, how did you get involved in this? How did you catch a passion to, to be such an advocate? I went to a lecture in 1996 by a genetic engineer, and he explained in meticulous detail why the technology was clearly not ready to be deployed in our food supply or grown outdoors where the pollen and seeds would transfer and be part of the genetic pool forever. He explained how the technology creates side effects and this could adversely affect everyone who eats, all living beings and all future generations. And yet no one knew about it. So with a background in education, communications, etc., I figured I would help the scientist out, translate his concerns into English so that everyone could understand and I've been doing that ever since ever since 1996, and that's when we had basically the proliferation of GMOs throughout most of our food supply, right? Exactly. Okay. So what are some of the changes you're working on right now? Well, right now, we are learning that so many people, when they take GMOs out of their diet, they feel better. We've heard from hundreds of people, as well as from the part of the thousands of doctors that are prescribing non-GMO diets. We've heard improvements in skin conditions, diabetes, weight loss, infertility, all sorts of gut problems, allergies, asthma, uh, liver conditions, uh, uh, kidney conditions. It has now become completely predictable that when I speak at a, at a large hall and I ask people how many have avoided GMOs and feel better and many raise their hand, I can tell you 
how frequent some of these symptoms come up. We've also discovered that these same symptoms are on the rise in the U.S. population since 1996, when GMOs were introduced. They're also described by the American Academy of Environmental Medicine as afflicting the lab animals fed GMOs. And finally, if you take livestock off of GMOs, they also get better from these same problems. So we're getting that information out now to a wider audience. How long did you say have GMOs been in our food system? Since 1996, 17 years. Prior to that, nothing. Nothing. This is the radical change. It was sexual reproduction only. It was the products of the billions of years of evolution only. And then all of a sudden, overnight, we're introducing designer genes into designer organisms designed to create a profit and control for companies that want to do that with all seeds, with all livestock, with insects, with trees. Essentially, they want to replace nature. So, so scary. How, how do you see, I mean, when their GMOs are banned in so many European countries or there's restrictions on them, but yet they're, they're okay here. I see it as basically the law of unintended consequences where it's, it's allowed until, you know, it's, it's innocent until proven guilty and maybe it'll be like when, hey, with smoking, we didn't know it was bad for you. So where, how are we going to get, let's say, the FDA to protect us and to get regulations? Do you think we have to do it just through labeling? That's an excellent question. So first of all, I've given up on the FDA. The person who was in charge of FDA policy that, uh, for the GMO policy was Monsanto's former attorney. They created the position for him after the White House told the FDA promote biotechnology. His policy falsely claimed that we know nothing about any differences with GMOs, therefore no safety studies needed, no labeling needed. He then became Monsanto's chief lobbyist, and now he's back at the FDA as the U.S. food safety czar. Monsanto is, of course, the big GMO company. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe that the FDA or even the Obama administration is where we need to go to solve the problem. Your point about Europe is well taken. It was banned in Europe in 1999, not by the European Commission, but by first Unilever, then Nestle's, then everyone else, McDonald's, Burger King. They realized that an informed European community, they didn't want to eat GMOs, and so they would lose money if they used GM ingredients. Now they're starting to realize the same thing over here as we're educating more people about the links of GMOs to gastrointestinal disorders, immune problems, etc. The non-GMO labeled products in the United States grew faster in sales last year than any other category. In fact, the Whole Foods president in March of 2013 said when a product becomes non-GMO project verified, it increases sales by 15 to 30 percent. So we have created the tipping point already in the natural food industry, and we think it's about to happen in the conventional food industry as well. Can you help me understand, then what is it doing to the body? So for the layperson watching this, maybe they haven't seen your movie yet. You ingest a GMO product, let's say corn, like corn chips, things like that. What's, dummy it down for us, what's happening and why is it causing so many problems? Okay, we'll make it real graphic. The corn that's produced by genetic engineering has two traits. The first trait is it drills holes in cells. It causes little holes in the cell walls of insects to kill them. It is an insecticide called Bt toxin. Not supposed to affect human cells, they got it wrong. They found in a study published last year, it drills holes in human cells. It also can provoke an immune response. So eating that corn chip might cause little holes throughout your gastrointestinal tract, which might mean why when the rise of this BT corn was tracked on a chart, you can also see inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel disease, chronic constipation, peritonitis. So it might be causing gastrointestinal disorders as well as leaky gut which is linked to autoimmune disease, food allergies, cancer, autism, asthma, um, all sorts of problems, including Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Now you also have Roundup Ready corn, which is corn that can be drenched with a weed killer called Roundup, and it's not safe. It turns out there was a study that came out this year that linked Roundup to heart disease, cancer, obesity, diabetes, autism, Alzheimer's, can, Parkinson's, can you, uh... sclerosis, etc. Can you name some brands that families typically buy for their kids, chips, that will have these things in there? Okay, Frito-Lay. Frito-Lay used to have a policy to be non-GMO. Several years ago they said, ah, oh, they don't worry about it in the United States. 
bring on the GMOs. Okay? Yeah. Kellogg's, Kellogg's Corn Flakes, Kraft Foods. Basically, right now, if it contains corn or soy, since 88% of the corn is GMO, 93% of the soy, if it's a derivative, like soybean oil or corn oil or corn flour or corn chips, it's GMO unless it says that it's not. It says it's either organic or non-GMO, then you know. Otherwise, just assume it's genetically engineered. Yeah, most of the major food companies are. All of the major food companies basically are. But like you said, we're creating, the only answer is to create that tipping point of consumer rejection through informing the public so they can make different choices. But how does that affect, how will that affect companies like Monsanto and DuPont and, and what's going to happen to, the, to them? Do you think they're going to go willingly? Oh, Monsanto has been kicking and screaming over the labeling issue. They don't want Americans to even know they're eating GMOs. They want blissful ignorance. So they poured millions of dollars into the ballot initiatives in Washington State and before that in California, essentially creating a situation where people voted against their best interest. So that people voted away from labeling because they thought it was going to increase their grocery bill or be bad for government or bad for business. It was all a lie. Yeah, but this is, this is this is this the ability to lie with such craftiness and such a confidence has actually been the hallmark of the biotech industry. They said with a straight face it would feed the world when it actually works against feeding the world. Mm -hmm. They said it would increase yield, it actually reduces yield. They said it would incre decrease the use of agricultural chemicals, it does the opposite. And they said it was safe, and now we know more and more evidence showing it may be one of the most serious health dangers we're facing. So what is the argument then against what, what your movie is about, uh, you know, what you're talking about? Is it that there's just not enough proof, there's not enough science, not enough printed literature to support the fact that it really does change gene expression or really does cause these problems? And what is the well, argument? Give, what can they say? I'll give you an example. Uh, a French team took a Monsanto study apart, saw the raw data and said Monsanto's conclusions that the rats were not harmed were completely false, that these rats had signs of toxicity. So they went further and said, okay, Monsanto did a 90-day study, we'll do a two-year study, and we'll have more rats and we'll do more tests. It turns out after the 90 days when Monsanto would lock up shop, that's when the tumors started. By the end of the two years, up to 80% of the female rats got tumors, up to 50% of the male rats. They died at two or three times the rate, and they had damaged kidneys, livers, and pituitary glands. The other side immediately said, oh, the scientist must be an activist. Oh, he used the wrong protocol. Oh, he used the wrong rats. Oh, he used a, different, a wrong control group size. The scientist wasn't an activist. Uh, the rats that were used were the same rats that Monsanto used, the same control group size. All of the attack was basically pure rubbish. But what they did is they sent out talking points around the world, and then they had highly credentialed pro-biotech advocates say the same thing. And then they started to say, see, there's a scientific consensus. They sent that around to the media, and the media became too scared to report the results in many of the countries. And so this was a news that should have shut down the biotech industry or immediately caused a, a raft of, of many other studies to verify the results. And this is typical. Whenever a scientist discovers problems, whether it's massive um, infant mortality or massive problems with rats in just a few days of eating a GMO, they are typically lucky if they can continue to hold their job after they announce the results. Right. We saw that in, in genetic roulette. So what, it just seems so crazy to me, like you were saying, that uh, what I read, maybe Monsanto spent $45 million when we went, went for Prop 37 in California, and now Prop 522 in Washington State, $22 million. I mean, they're spending so much money to misinform us or not in our best interest when that, could, that money could be propagated and, and this shift could happen. It's, it just seems so counterintuitive. Well, you see, the thing is, the food companies can adjust pretty easily as soon as they convert and the tipping point happens that ADM and Cargill will just create big processing plants for corn and soy and they'll have plenty of non-GMO corn and soy for direct derivatives and in a few years enough for all the animal feed as well. 
It's the biotech industry that plants, their plan is to genetically engineer 100% of all commercial seeds in the world and patent them and sell them with their associated chemicals. So they have a plan to really control the seed supply, which means control the food supply. And food is the largest traded commodity on earth. So that would be a destruction of their plans for control and massive profits. So they're, they're a multi-billion dollar company and they're willing to spend millions in order to try and keep their plan on track. Does GMO, by the way, create uh, uh, the body to want it more? Like a GMO product, is it like an MSG in a way? And, and do you, when you mention these guys, uh, I mean, do you believe it's a conspiracy? Do you think they just don't care? Do you think they're looking the other way, these food companies? I mean, do you think they're, they're I don't believe they're deliberately harming people. And, or maybe you do, I'm curious. All right, in terms of the deliberate harm, we'll hand you that second. It turns out that Roundup is poured onto a lot of these Roundup-ready crops. That's most of the GM crops are designed to be sprayed with Roundup. Roundup shuts down the production of tryptophan in, by our gut bacteria. Tryptophan is a precursor to serotonin. Serotonin is not only important for stress and mood, but serotonin tells the body, okay, stop eating, I'm, I'm full. So if you don't have the serotonin in place, you may keep eating. And so you asked, well, is it, is it self-replicating in terms of eating? In that way, it may be. Now, hmm. do, people, do people in the industry actually know that there are dangers? Well, I talked to a former Monsanto scientist. He said, when they found that the corn damaged the rats, instead of withdrawing the corn, they rewrote the study to hide the effects. He also told me that three of his colleagues were doing studies on the on the milk that had been treated from cows treated with bovine growth hormone, a Monsanto drug. They found so much cancer promoting hormone in the milk that the three Monsanto scientists refused to drink milk thereafter unless it was organic. One bought his own cow. Another former Monsanto employee told me how they were finding uncharacterized new proteins inside their genetically modified crops that they were feeding to animals. He said, this could be dangerous. If you feed these things to animals, there could be all sorts of problems for the animals, for the humans. He was ignored, he was ostracized, he left the company. So do you think you will, how soon do you think you will see a day where GMOs are like other countries, not legal here? Well, other countries, very few of them have it illegal. Not illegal, but where? Restrictions. Restrictions. Restrictions are mostly from the food companies who refuse to use them because of the, um, the rejection by consumers. I think that's going to happen soon, within the next year. I think within the next year, we have a window of opportunity coming up, the most important in the history of anti-GMO activism. It's when a non-health food brand that's known by everyone states that it's non-GMO project verified, and it sits on the shelf of Walmart or Safeway, that's when the clock starts ticking. If we can increase the sales of the non-GMO product and show a decrease in market share of the GMO-laden competitors, everyone else in the food industry realizes, I don't want to be second mm -hmm. in my product category to declare non-GMO. Then we get the tipping point for direct derivatives and soon after for animal feed. So who's going to lead the charge? Which companies do you think are going to lead the charge? Which mainstream company? I have no idea. They keep that information secret until they announce. Mm. I, think, I think personally, those that are fed to children will have the greatest market response. Children are most at risk from the potential dangers. The young rats have massive immune responses when fed genetically modified corn. The adults' rats had hardly anything. Children can really be very vulnerable, especially pregnant mothers with the unborn fetuses. So I think infant formula, baby food, breakfast cereal, those kind of things will show the biggest uptick if they're non-GMO. Mm -hmm. And I think also we are now seeing pet food announcing that it's non-GMO in television commercials. Mm -hmm. I've been interviewing veterinarians and pet food, pet owners and pet food dealers, and it turns out the stories that we hear from moms about their kids are being repeated by pet owners and veterinarians about the animals. They take the GMOs out of the diet, the diarrhea, the itching, the other problems go away. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, as a clinician, I'm running lab work all the time and uh, checking for leaky gut syndrome and food sensitivities and telling parents kids are born with a sterile GI tract. And so you have to populate it, give them the good bacteria. And we're running this blood work and they're coming back 
I mean, really with not a great chance at a healthy adult life. And so that is something that I think really sits with people and it will force them to make that change. I think moms, because of the protection of kids, are going to lead the revolution. Yeah. And so, you know, power to the moms. Power to the moms. I like it. Now, you, you mentioned earlier about take, putting people on a non-GMO diet, that a lot of their symptoms, their problems are going away. With children, what, what, what's the word on the street, or what are the medical doctors telling you when you, when you, are you hearing stories where you're able to take kids maybe with ADD, ADHD, or asthma, that have been completely reversed over time? Yes, 100% reversed over time, and sometimes within days. Mm -hmm. um, and we've heard these stories, I've heard them personally, I've heard them from the clinicians. Um, a woman said to me, uh, her son was violent and out of control, they wanted to kick him out of school, she saw the movie Genetic Roulette, changed his diet immediately, within a month she had a new son. Mm -hmm. She said all the problems disappeared, and it's a completely different experience. I had a uh, Parents of autistic kids, you saw it in the film Genetic Roulette, took GMOs out of the diet, gastrointestinal disorders disappeared or improved, behavior improved dramatically. I hear about, you know, a family that takes GMOs out of the diet for their autistic kid and their other child with ADD, he doesn't have the ADD symptoms anymore. And the grade point average goes up. I hear this all the time. In fact, we're producing a series of movies, we're raising money to produce a series of movies for, for moms particularly about what happens with children when they're taken off of GMOs. I love that. What do you say to the families that may say, you know, can I afford to feed my kids organic, non-GMO foods? Is it 30% more, 40% more? Oh, I don't think it's that much. But the thing is, first of, first of all, there's, there's two or three answers to this. Can you afford not to when you realize that so many chronic diseases out there are marching lockstep on the charts with the introduction of GMOs. Secondly, you don't have to buy organic to avoid GMOs. Ragu spaghetti sauce has ragu light and ragu chunky. Read the ingredients. Go to our shopping guide at non-gmoshoppingguide.com. Not only are there over 10,000 products that are verified as non-GMO, it lists the at-risk ingredients. There are no at-risk ingredients in Ragu Light. There are two at-risk ingredients in Ragu Chunky. It doesn't say non-GMO, it doesn't say organic, but one uses olive oil, the other uses soybean oil and high fructose corn syrup. So by learning how to avoid GMOs, you can do it on a budget. And I would guess that for many people, the amount spent for medical purposes will more than comp the reduction will more than compensate if you do want to go the extra mile for organic. Plus quality of life as do, well. Do you think these companies are going to get in trouble for withholding study information about the dangers of GMO? Do you think you may see 10 years people doing jail time, things like that? Mm. Now you're into my daydreams. <laughs> I think about that, you know. I'd like them to, but we never know how well they cover themselves. Yeah. If it were up to you, would GMO be illegal? Oh, uh, there's no question. If we're up to me, if we're up to the independent scientists around the world, they'd say, put it back in the laboratory for 50 or 100 years. Do your homework first. I've heard that very line stated by UC Berkeley professor. But the thing is, when you state that out loud, you risk your, in fact, your entire career because of the attack status that occurs very, very specifically and intentionally so that we don't hear that as much. Hundreds of scientists refuse to do research in this field because they're not willing to risk their careers or their, their funding. Are there things that you'd like to talk about that you don't generally talk about that really aggravate you about this whole situation? Well, I think one of the funnest things is to describe how they rig their research. They, you know, pasteurized milk 120 times longer than normal. They overcooked samples. They, they used, you know, three, three animals. They, they found dead animals in their experimental group and they removed them and they replaced them. We've caught them red-handed rigging their research. So it is so easy to show how these companies lie. Mm -hmm. You know, in my, first, in my first book, Seeds of Deception, it, you know, for 10 years it's been the international bestseller on GMOs. People say, where did you get all this information? From the internet, from interviews. It's not hard, it's, you know, it's in plain sight. Mm -hmm. The lies are in plain sight. You can read the memos of the scientists working at the FDA. GMOs can do this and this and this. Then you read the, the official policy, ignoring everything that the scientists say. 
So it's not rocket, well, as we say, it's not rocket surgery. <laughs> how many people, by the way, how many people have estimated, that, do you estimate that have seen your documentary? Well, it was at least two million on the free showing weeks that we've had, and we have one going right now. Um, uh, so I would say more than two million. And your next movie is? Well, I'm doing a lot of small movies now, you know, for pet owners, for moms, for people suffering from gluten intolerance, people suffering from gastrointestinal disorders, people who are trying to get pregnant, people who are overweight. We're doing smaller treatments that at the end we'll probably put together and do a sequel to Genetic Roulette with a lot more evidence now. The work you're doing is just incredible. I mean, how how can we help you get Genetic Roulette out there? And, and, and how what can our viewers do that are watching now that they've, they've got the fire lit in them to, to make a difference? So GeneticRouletteMovie.com is where you can see it online or buy one or buy 10 or buy 100. We've tested a lot of different tools over the last 17 years that I've been involved. And nothing has worked as effectively as watching Genetic Roulette in order to change people's diet. So many people watch the film, then they automatically get to the cupboard stage, they throw away the negative, the bad stuff, they replace it with the good stuff, and they feel better. Headaches go away, asthma goes away, people just have a better quality of life. So in my mind, if we can get that film out to as many possible people, it was produced by our nonprofit, the Institute for Responsible Technology. So buying it is like a donation. So buy it, get a thousand of them to your closest thousand of your closest personal friends. Mm -hmm. Okay, Theo, I promise you that, plus a whole lot more because we're going to be airing this show all over. Well, thanks for coming on the Randy and Chris's show. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Safe Thank eating. You. You've been watching The Randy and Krista Show. I'm Randy Alvarez uh, with Krista Recchio. Krista, final words? And we will see you guys next time. Watch Genetic Roulette, the movie. All right, news that makes you healthier. We'll see you.